And a lot of things that we want to do, a lot of places we would like to go, a lot of things we would like to experience, and we just stop at but, and we build a case. In fact, I was reading something the other day that, that talked about but. It says but is an argument for our limitations. And when we argue for our limitations, we get to keep them. See, but will cause you to procrastinate. But will cause you to hide out behind fear. But will cause you to come up with all type of excuses that you can validate your inaction and not acting on your dream. And right now, more than ever, people need to look for ways to live their dream. People need, need to look for ways to make it on their own. There is no such thing as job security. There's no such thing as a storm-proof or tragic-proof life. There are no guarantees today, ladies and gentlemen. The illusion is gone. There was a time when, when we graduated from high school, you're told, go to college and get out, and you go and work for a corporation for 30 or 40 years, they'll give you a gold watch and you'll retire. Special announcement, that day is gone. <laughs> that day is gone, never to return again. So instead of people living in fear, feeling stressed out, feeling powerless, feeling like victims, I think it should be a time that we need to begin to look at ways that we can become an active force in our own lives. Look at ways when we can decide to take charge of our own destiny. Look at ways when we can decide to design a life of substance and begin to truly live our dreams. And it's time for people to decide, I'm ready to get on with my life. Shake somebody's hand on your right and left. A guy named Bob May said, say, don't let nobody turn you around. Do that right quick. Now, you know, a lot of people say, I'm going to live my life one day when things get right. When I get all my bills paid. When I get my feet on the ground. I say, what have you been walking on? <laughs> See, there are no problem-free moments. A guy named Dimples had a record one time called, if it ain't one thing, it's another. And I say, if it ain't one thing, it's 12 others. Always something there to build a case on why you can't move on, why you can't grow to the next level, why you can't begin to manifest your greatness, why you can't begin to live life on your terms. Always something there to block you, to keep you where you are and keep you from beginning to develop your true greatness. Always some fear. How do we handle it? So if you want to make six figures, you can't just be talking about you want to make six figures. You hear what I'm saying to you tonight? If you do the three things I tell you to do tonight, I guarantee you, whatever it is you want to do in life, you'll be able to do. You will be able to accomplish whatever you want to academically, financially, relationally, whatever. So three things. All right, now I'm going to tell you the story. I got to get out of here. And the story is about, you guys have probably heard about this before. It was, a, it was a young man who, you know, he wanted to make a lot of money. And so he went to this guru, right? He told the guru, you know, I want to be on the same level you are. And so the guru said, if you want to be on the same level I'm on, I'll meet you tomorrow at the beach at 4 a.m. He liked the beach. I said, I want to make money. I don't want to swim. The guru said, if you want to make money, I'll meet you tomorrow, 4 a.m. So the young man got there at 4 a.m. He all ready to rock and roll, got on a suit. He should have worn shorts. The old man grabs his hand and said, how bad do you want to be successful? He said, real bad. He said, walk on out in the water. So he walks out into the water. Watch this. When he walks out into the water, it goes waist deep. So he's like, this guy crazy. Adrian, he's like, I want to make money. He got me out here swimming. I didn't ask to be a lifeguard. I want to make money. He got me in. So he said, come out a little further. Walked out a little further. Then he had it right around this area, the shoulder area. So this old man crazy. He's making money, but he's crazy. He said, come on out a little further. He came out a little further. It was right at his mouth. My man, like, I'm about to go back in here. This guy is mine. So the old man said, I thought you said you wanted to be successful. He said, I do. He said, walk a little further. He came, dropped his head in, held him down, holding him down. My man getting scratching, holding him down. I got you. I know you brushed it out, but I got you. He had him held down. I need you for an illustration. He had him held down just before my man was about to pass out. He raised him up. He said, I got a question for you. Somebody answer the question for me. He said, when you were underwater, what did you want to do? I'm looking for a different word, though, than lift. What's that word?
How many of you, if you were honest with me, do you know you have these, these choices and these areas in your life that you want to try to move towards? You know that you want to try to change. You know you want to face some of these struggles, but fear sometimes paralyzes you. Anybody in here? Yeah, man, I've learned in my journey that I have to skydive that thing. And here's what I mean. I know sometimes, as when I was growing up, I didn't trust anybody. I know I, things that happened to me. My dad abandoned me. I isolated. And I always said, if I find the perfect person that I can count on, if I find the perfect person that I can trust, then I will. But the truth is that person's not here. People are people and they're going to let you down. I've learned I can't put my trust and my, my confidence in the people, but it's in the, it's in the process and the discipline and the action of the habit of finding the courage to punch fear in the face and take the step of beginning to trust people, which means I started talking, I started speaking. I learned to skydive that thing and here's what I mean. There's a lot of fears and insecurities all of us have. We all have insecurities, like it, love it, or leave it. We all have things inside of us that we try to keep secure because we, we have shame or guilt or embarrassment or we care what others think. I've learned to skydive that thing. Last year, a bucket list that I've always wanted to do, I've always wanted to go skydiving. I'm an adrenaline junkie, but the problem is now, where I'm at in my life, I'm a husband, and I'm a father, and I guess my wife doesn't approve of me jumping out of planes at 15,000 feet. So I thought something that I've always wanted to do, I was never going to get the opportunity to do. But I was in Oregon, and I got done early, and I saw a sign, and it said, Skydive Oregon. And so I was like, yeah. I called my wife. If I can get my wife to say, yeah, we're all good, I call her and I'm like, hey honey, I got done a little bit early. I've always wanted to, you know it's something that I've desired to do. I think I'm gonna go skydiving. Nah, I'm cool, I'm not going to. Yeah, maybe, nah, I'm just kidding, I'm all right. I don't need to do that, it's not probably smart. And she says, I don't think she meant it at all, but she says, because I don't think she wanted to control me, she says, oh no, honey, go for it, do whatever you wanna do. But yeah, if you don't wanna do it, no big deal, that's cool too. Click. Dude, 